to worship with Community Mennonite Church. I'm Pastor Jennifer Davis Sensenig. It is a joy to lead this congregation and build community with all of you, even as we protect one another from the virus and are worshiping at a distance from one another these days. Today's worship service reminds us again of new beginnings. Today is a celebration of call for our new associate pastor, Joyce Peachy Lind. Joyce invited Reverend Dan Schrock to bring a meditation for us on this special day. We're also pleased to have our Allegheny Mennonite Conference Minister, Reverend Dave Mishler, to officiate in the licensing for pastoral ministry. Now, Dan and Dave are guests among us, and perhaps you are a guest as well. Welcome to worship, and we welcome you to connect with our congregation in a variety of other ways, through film discussions, Bible studies, coffee hours that take place virtually, or with small groups who are meeting socially distant in the Harrisonburg area. In addition to the children's time during worship, we're adding some more faith formation opportunities for children and adults this fall. Our current adult education class is studying Ibram X. Kendi's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. Our scripture today is from Genesis. Now last week, we were in the Garden of Eden among the trees pursuing knowledge, good and evil, trying to know it all. This week is another origin story. We're with Abram the Nomad, the namesake of Abram X. Kendi. We're beneath the stars, and here God calls us to embrace a divine promise. Let's linger with the image of a star-filled sky throughout this week. Will you join me in prayer? God of wonder, like our ancestor Abram, we need a new beginning. We are confronted by change, disappointed by life, resigned to the status quo, and facing many obstacles. Even if we hear nothing particularly new today, we long to embrace your promise that will make meaning from our fragmented lives. We want to believe again that you are a wonderful creator maker of stars and all that we see, and that you work patiently within us and through us. Give us hearts to believe what you share with us today in worship, so that we might bless the world as representatives of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's sing from the green hymnal number 36. I'll start by leading from the piano, and I just want to uh, make you aware that before we go back to each verse, there'll be a little piano interlude, but I think it'll be clear when it's time for you to come back in. Uh, please stand if you're able.
Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Have you ever had to wait a long time for something? Today we will be talking about Abram, whose name later changed to Abraham. He had to wait a long time for a promise from God to happen. God chose Abram to be the beginning of a whole new nation that would be called God's people. God told Abram to leave his home and relatives and to begin traveling. Abram took his wife Sarah and his nephew Lot and left his home and began traveling and living in tents. The Lord also told Abram that his name would be great and that a whole world would be blessed through this new nation. But Abram and his wife, Sarah, didn't have any children. God promised Abram a son. He also told Abram, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand in the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your child, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Now imagine all the stars in the sky. I was on a trip in the Moroccan desert, and I was sitting in the middle of the desert around a fire with friends. And we let the fire die down and we turned out all the lights that were around us. Once this happened, we looked up and there were so many stars in the sky that you couldn't even start to count them. It was so beautiful. You could see the Milky Way, and just so many stars. Do you think you'd be able to count all of those stars? And then think about each one of those stars being a person. That's a lot of people. Think about when you go to the beach and there's sand all around you. Each little pebble of sand is a person. Could you count all of that sand? Could you count all of those people? That's a lot of people. Lastly, Abram and Sarah did have a son. Abram, who at this point is called Abraham, was a hundred years old. And Sarah was 90 years old when their son Isaac was born. They had to wait 25 years for their son to be born. 25 years of waiting for the promise that Jesus gave them to come about and for them to have a son. Do you think you could wait that long? Could you wait 25 years or longer? for something to happen. That's a lot of patience and a lot of waiting. Hello, members and friends of Community Mennonite. My name is Dan Schock, and I'm delighted to participate in this licensing and installation service for Joyce P.G. Lind. 
I've known Joyce and Myron since the late 1980s. I currently work as a member of the pastoral team at Berkey Avenue Mennonite Fellowship in Goshen, Indiana, and I teach the spiritual direction courses at Anabaptist Mennonite Biblical Seminary in an adjunct role. You've already heard our text for today. At first hearing, this may sound like a story that has little to do with the installation of a pastor, or little to do with our hope that Joyce will have many years of fruitful ministry at Community Mennonite. Yet one enduring quality of scripture is its artful ability to illuminate a nearly endless variety of contexts, such as the case today. We're in chapter 15, but the story really begins in chapter 12. When God asks Abram and Sarai to leave their settled home in Haran and go to an undisclosed place, to a land which God will show them eventually, but not now, at this moment. This is a familiar pattern for many of us, is it not? When God urges us to do something, to go somewhere or to take up a particular line of work, we never really know what is going to happen to us. We say yes without knowing exactly what we're saying yes to. We may leave for a place that we don't know we're going to. We engage the future without knowing what that future will bring. Decades ago, when as a young person, Joyce committed herself to God in the public act of baptism, she probably did not imagine that one day that commitment would turn her into a pastor. Similarly, when Myron married Joyce 30 some years ago, he likely would have laughed in disbelief if someone had told him he would eventually become a pastor's spouse. This is also true for pastors and congregations. When a pastor and a congregation agree to work together, they do not and cannot know in advance where this relationship will take them. This is even true for a pastor who already knows this congregation as well as Joyce does, and for a congregation that already knows a new pastor as well as CMC does. For each of you, there are still unknowns, and for each of you, there will be surprises. A simple example is that when Joyce started to imagine herself as a pastor about 19 months ago, neither she nor you suspected this pastorate would begin in the middle of COVID. Yet here we are, illustrating that in congregational life, the surprising twists and turns never end. We come now to Genesis 15. Sarah and Abram are in a state of dis-ease, of uncertainty, perhaps even a state of anxiety. Their original invitation from God, which had come to them back in their hometown of Haran, included a clause that God would make for them a great nation. That is, God would give them a multitude of descendants. However, that was quite a while ago, and so far nothing has happened on that front. 
Abram and Sarai still have no descendants, not even a single child. In a word, they are getting impatient. Impatient with this stalled situation and perhaps above all, impatient with God. After 30 years of working as a pastor and listening to other pastors from a variety of different denominations, I notice that impatience is a common theme in pastor-congregation relationships. We pastors easily get impatient with our congregation. And people in congregations easily get impatient with each other or with their pastors. Joyce, as a pastor, you will sometimes get impatient. By nature, you may have a certain amount of impatience running around inside you. But in any case, the work of pastoring itself will occasionally make you impatient. Maybe the congregation won't do what you want them to do. Maybe your pastoral colleagues will see things differently than you do. Maybe someone in the congregation will get stuck over a particular issue in their life, and you wish they would hurry up and unstick themselves. Or community Mennonite, you might sometimes get a bit impatient with Joyce. Of course, you have every right to expect competence and compassion from your pastoral team. Still, moments may come when you wish Joyce would say what you want her to say, or you wish she would respond in a way that fits your preferences for how you would like a pastor to respond. Maybe you'll get a little impatient with her. What then might you do in response to your own impatience? Perhaps you could look to Abram and Sarai for some guidance. First, it's just fine to share your laments with God. When Abram's impatience boils up, he speaks directly with God. You, he tells God, have given me no offspring. Abram's words are accusatory, maybe even a bit angry. This is how the voice of lament works in the context of an ongoing abiding relationship with God. We have permission to express anything we want to God including our most raw emotions. Let us remember that it's far better to express our raw emotions to God than to the other partner in the pastor-congregation relationship. And second, let your trust in God deepen. When Abram gets impatient with how things are going, God calmly responds. Look at the sky, Abram. See all of those uncountable stars? In time, that's how many descendants you will have. Do you see what God is doing here? God essentially invites Abram and Sarai to trust more deeply in God's capacity and in God's character. 
This is the real meaning of faith. Faith is not so much giving our assent to rational propositions. At the heart, faith is about growing to trust more and more in God's capacity to do what God intends to do and to trust that God's character will achieve it in a way that brings about our flourishing. The pastor-congregation relationship provides fertile ground for building this kind of trust. Joyce, today you and the congregation have embarked on a great adventure in God. I offer you a blessing based on the blessing that Melchizedek gave to Abram and Sarai in Genesis 14. Joyce and Community Mennonites, blessed be you by God Most High, the maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God who has summoned you to trust. Amen. The God of Abraham's praise, all oh, praise be the name. about our ancestor Abraham. Jesus said, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, well, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Let's carry Jesus' words and warning into our prayer of dedication for the many offerings we bring today. Lord Jesus, as a church, we benefit from gifts that our faith ancestors gave, service, money, leadership, and spiritual gifts. We are grateful for the artistry and spiritual insight of Jewish ancestors who gave us the text and tune we sang that him, the God of Abram, praise. May the gifts of past generations continue to bless us and inspire faith for today. With you, Lord Jesus, we will not neglect the gifts that are ours to give today, to bless all nations of the world and to bring glory to your name always. Amen.
So I bring greetings from Allegheny Mennonite Conference and Scottsdale Mennonite Church. I serve as Conference Minister for Allegheny. We're here for a special occasion today, licensing Joyce to uh, pastoral ministry and also celebrating her call to this specific congregation. Joyce, persons are ready for licensing when they have followed the promptings of the Holy Spirit and the church to consider ordained ministry and when they have prepared themselves through prayer and study for a pastoral assignment. The service of licensing is often initiated by the congregation inviting a person into ministry in their midst as part of an exploration of ongoing suitability for ordained ministry. Licensing is always for a specified time of testing, usually not less than one year and not more than two years, during which the candidate and the calling congregation share in a process of discernment. Joyce, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And all who heed the call from the Lord of the harvest and enter the covenant of baptism become Christ's ministers. All receive the Spirit. All are given gifts. Through the Spirit, God continues to call women and men to the gift of ordained ministry. Spiritual receptivity and practice in the day-to-day -day tasks of ministry are necessary to test and to reinforce someone's sense of call. We gather here today because we believe that God is drawing you, Joyce, to ordained ministry. The years ahead will be a time of testing to see if you are willing and able to follow this path, to see if this set-apart ministry is the one to which God and the church are indeed calling you. The congregation and conference have confirmed your growing sense of calling and promise to join you as you continue this time of discernment. As you faithfully pursue the purposes you here affirm, you will become more certain of God's will for your life. So I ask you, Joyce, do you renew your baptismal vow, claiming Christ's grace, offering him your obedience? I do. Is it your heart's desire to serve God according to God's will for you? It is. Do you affirm your devotion to Christ's church and mission? Will you seek to grow in faithfulness to it, guided by the Holy Spirit and Scripture, in the company of this congregation and conference? I will. Are you willing to accept this ministry as a stewardship of God's grace and as preparation for further service? Let's pray together. Lord of creation, Lord of the church, we bless you for the gifts you give to all whom you have made and which you call forth through your spirit for the sake of the kingdom. Thank you for Joyce, for your spirit's work in her life, for Joyce's seeking of your will above all else. Grant her a discerning heart, confidence in your call, strength and joy in the tasks of ministry now set before her. Make us partners with her in ministry, constant in support, gentle in criticism, prayerful in all things. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, our servant. Amen. Joyce Peachy Lind, you are licensed to Christian ministry for this congregation in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Preach the word offer the ordinances, bear witness in word and deed to the gospel, and may the peace of God sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do it. Amen.
And as a second part of our service this morning, we are not only licensing you, we are celebrating your call to this particular congregation, Community Mennonite Church. So I ask, sisters and brothers, you have heard the commitment to ministry in this congregation made by Joyce. Do you receive her as your minister? Will you seek to live honestly, openly, and justly with her? If so, say we will. We will. We will. Let's pray. O oh God, you call your people to service through the church. Bless the covenant we have made together as people and pastor. We thank you for the calling to this ministry that comes to each of us. But on this day, we especially thank you for the calling to pastoral ministry. Be a source of strength to Joyce. Endow her with the gifts of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Bind us to one another in the bond of peace. Amen. Hear these words of affirmation and blessing from pastoral team members and those who have already experienced Joyce's ministry. From Jennifer North Bauman. Joyce, you have followed your calling using your gifts and talents and shared them in a way that has blessed many musicians, the church, and many children. Thank you for heeding your call and using your gift to further the church and then sharing them with us. From Leah Wanger, Joyce, I had the privilege to be a child at CMC under your children's ministry. From piano lessons to Sunday school to Eastern Mennonite Elementary School, it has been a joy to watch you grow and fulfill your various callings, even as I have grown myself. I look forward to being a part of this next step and to watch you live into this role as I have seen you do with so many others. And from myself, Joyce, I couldn't be more thrilled to have you join our pastoral team. Thanks for the many memories already, as I've related to you and Myron as you parented Jake and Matt, and as I've tackled tasks with you in Youth Commission and throughout your time as Office Administrator. And I'm excited to experience how you'll continue to shape the children, youth, and families of this congregation. From Heidi Durstein, Joyce, your many life experiences have uniquely positioned and prepared you for this new role as associate pastor. Your new ideas, along with your energy and wide range of skills, will be a wonderful addition to our great pastoral team. From Viva Mumal, Joyce, thank you for following God's call to ministry and to share your gifts with CMC. May God's Spirit continue to remain with you as you minister in Harrisonburg and Rockingham County. We are excited that you are here. And from Dave Smucker. Joyce, it has been a joy to watch you as the call to pastoral ministry and specifically pastoral ministry at CMC has taken root and blossomed. May God bless you, sustain you, and work through you as you serve as pastor of Community Mennonite Church. And from Pastor Jennifer. Joyce, you have blessed this congregation in various leadership roles from council and youth commission to chairing our 40th anniversary committee to serving as our church administrator. As you begin your journey as a pastor, we pray that these experiences, your many gifts and the skills you've been developing through seminary and internships become a new blessing in you and through you. 
We pray for the Holy Spirit's daily guidance and empowerment for the ministry to which you've been called. And we ask God to bless you with the joy of living into your vocation as CMC's pastor. Joyce, we wanted to give you something as a symbol for your office space where you will study and pray and meet with people. And we're so aware of the various names by which you've been known in this community. So we want you to remember that the light of Christ is in the center of your life, the God who uh, created you and said, let there be light, also shines in Jesus, the light of the world, and in that flame of the Holy Spirit, which rests with you. We have, many of us, simply known you as Joyce, as friend, as neighbor, as companion in the Christian journey. And we've known you as Miss Joyce, especially those who have been your preschool students and uh, kinder music students. And this is a significant part of your identity as well. Some of us in our community have also known you as Mrs. Lind because you were an elementary teacher to so many in this congregation and beyond. And now we want to add this stone that says Pastor Joyce, and we will take great joy in referring to you as our Pastor Joyce. So we invite you to embrace all of these identities and be embraced by the light and love of God as we celebrate with you. God bless you, Pastor Joyce. Please join me in this morning's pastoral prayer. Lord, you made a covenant with Abram to provide numerous descendants in time. So many descendants that they would be beyond number, just as it's exceedingly difficult to count the stars above when looking skyward. For that promise, Abram and Sarai waited. They waited for years upon years. They waited amidst their questions. Although frustrated at times, they continued to patiently await God's glory to emerge out of their belief. Holding firm to their belief in God's promise, the Lord counted their belief as righteousness. Lord. May you guide people who are waiting for your promise amidst their questions. Guide also those whose frustrations threaten to overwhelm them. Guide anyone who feels that they've been waiting too long, too many years. Be a guide amidst times of waiting so that you can reckon belief as righteousness. Be a guide so that like Sarai and Abram, people today can witness God's glory emerging out of belief. For those awaiting your promise, may the words of comfort offered to Abram sustain them in their time of waiting. As you said, Lord, to Abram, do not be afraid. I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. As it was for Abram, may it be so. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Receive this benediction. May the promises of God sustain you. May the peace of Christ bless you. May the presence of the Spirit direct you so that the world is blessed through you. Amen.